Hello, welcome to lecture 3 of module 1. In this lecture, we are going to learn some mathematical tools essential for the treatment of quantum entanglement. In fact, we are going to discuss the so-called density matrix formalism. In the last lecture, we learned, actually we know it from our elementary quantum mechanics that all the information is uh, that a quantum system has is contained in the so-called wave function or the state vector or state ket represented by the so-called ket psi. So ket psi represented like this contains all information about a quantum system. When we can say with complete definiteness that a system is in the quantum state k psi, that kind of state is called pure quantum state. There is no randomness in specifying the state of the system. Now this point would be more clearer to you when I'm going to discuss about the so-called mixed states. And uh, but before I go to mixed state, let me say something more about pure quantum state. A pure state psi can be represented or can be expanded as a superposition of basis states, say uh, C1 phi 1, k phi 1, C2 k phi 2, C3 k phi 3, and so on. Here, these phi's are k phi's are the so-called basis state. C1, C2, C3 are complex numbers, and I can write it shorthand notation as summation i c i k phi i. And you know the property that c i has to obey this complex coefficient. If you sum it, sum over all the complex coefficients mod squares would be equal to 1 because as you know c1 mod square gives the probability of find the uh, this arbitrary state psi in the uh, basis state phi1 uh, then similarly c2 mod square is going to give the probability of finding the state in the basis state phi2 and so on let me invoke the example of a qubit to understand some more useful concept. In the last lecture, we discussed a specific qubit system, the so-called spin-half quantum system. As we will see in this course, uh, many quantum entanglement concepts to understand. We are going to use the example of a qubit system again and again in this course. Now, let us consider a spin-half uh, system defined by this k psi and we are going to take the basis state as say this up state up spin state and down spin state or also we can represent it say plus k psi state and minus k state as we have discussed it in the last class so because we are considering this spin state uh, spin system so this k psi would be equal to say c1 up state k up state and then c2 k down state and if we take the up state this actually we have discussed all these notational thing we have discussed in the last, last class okay. and the down state is 0 1 okay and then this k psi can be represented in this basis by this column vector so c1 c2 would, would be its element and with the property c1 mod square plus c2 mod square is equal to 1. now actually we can write say c1 is equal to because it's a complex coefficient uh, i can write c1 as a cos theta by 2 and c2 i can write as sine theta by 2 e to the power i phi if i write in this notation immediately you can see that this particular condition is satisfied and it has its own utility when we write the arbitrary k psi in the 
uh, in this two state system which is in our case a spin half system in this form so cos theta by 2 up state plus sin theta by 2 e to the power i phi down state okay so this is what we have now this actually gives us a very nice and intuitive picture of the state space of the spin half particle uh, in fact any qubit can be represented uh, in a nice uh, you know uh, diagram uh, that i'm now going to discuss by the way this particular state i can also write it in this form k psi is equal to cos theta by 2 k 0 which referred to the up state sin theta by 2 e to the power i phi that's the complex coefficient and this is k to 1 i think uh, now onwards i'm going to use it for later part of my discussion here uh, I was talking about that particular diagrammatic representation it has a name it's called block sphere i will elaborate more on it on it but first let me draw a sphere like this let me consider it as you please consider it as a sphere it's a sphere of say unit radius that means radius one these are my axes this is say x axis this is y axis you can recall the so-called spherical polar coordinate and suppose there is a let me use this different color now uh, let us say this is a vector this vex vector is touching the surface of this say unit sphere and this angle is theta and if i take a projection here and this angle is the azimuthal angle say phi now recall that we have uh, we are now representing uh, our two state quantum st uh, state uh, this quantum system by this particular state now i uh, you will see that this particular uh, representation basically refers to the fact that every point on the sphere okay every point on the sphere is going to represent a quantum state depending on the angle theta and phi okay just to give an example if, if i say if we say take theta is equal to zero and phi is equal to zero then you see this k psi would be equal to uh, k zero right yeah it would be only become k0 because of uh, from here you can see so this is going to represent uh, the up state of the the system that means the this spin half particle is its spin is directed along say in the z direction and it can it is basically referring to this particular point the northern hemisphere you can say this particular point is rep refers to the state k0 which rep represents in other words the up state of the spin or if i have say theta is equal to uh, say pi and phi is equal to zero then this k psi is going to represent the state again you if you look at it from uh, this uh, expression here theta is equal to pi so uh, the first term is going to vanish so it will be and phi i am taking to be zero so this is going to represent the state k1 and which refers to basically the down spin right and this is going to represent this point here in the southern hemisphere so this is going to represent k1 in this way just by varying the angle theta and phi the whole surface of the sphere can be covered and for a specific angle of theta and specific angle of phi uh, we, we are going to get a quantum state okay and this representation of the block sphere is of immense importance in particular uh, to 
quantum uh, computation and it's very useful and let me give another example let us say if i what happens if i consider say theta is equal to say pi by 2 let me say theta is equal to pi by 2 and uh, say phi is equal to 0 in this case i will have this kth psi if again let me refer to this equation here now i am taking theta is equal to pi by uh, 2 so therefore cos pi by 4 that is going to be 1 by root 2 right cos pi by 4 would be 1 by root 2 k 0 plus sin theta by 2 that is sin pi by 4 that would be again 1 by root 2 e to the power i phi is equal to 0 now uh, 1 now because phi is equal to 0 so you have this so you are getting a superposition state of k 0 and k 1 and this is a superposition state this one is going to be represented by this particular point this particular point here this is going to represent the superposition state 1 by root 2 k 0 plus k 1 okay the this basically this particular vector is now going to point along this direction and it is touching the block sphere at the equator along the positive x-axis i hope you get the idea and you may be uh, convinced also that this is a very powerful way uh, to represent a two-state quantum system and this is known as this particular sphere as i said is called the block sphere it's basically the block sphere representation of a qubit till now we are talking about a single component system for example when we talked about a two-state system it uh, for example the spin up system that is a qubit a single qubit now let us consider two such qubits or two such uh, quantum system uh, one system is lying in the Hilbert space uh, say H1 and another one is lying in the Hilbert space H2. Such kind of composite systems are called bipartite systems. Now let me talk more about it and I will explain uh, what we mean by, by bipartite system in detail because later on we are going to talk about bipartite entanglement. So let us say we have a system uh, having two components one component is lying in the Hilbert space say H1 another component is lying in the Hilbert space H2 so this is component number one and this is component number two a system I think let me better write it a system composed of composed of two separate components separate components is called bipartite some of you may be hearing it for the first time but it's very simple as you can see a system composed of two separate components is called bipartite system then the system as a whole lives in a Hilbert space H is equal to tensor product of or direct product of H1 and H2. It's called a tensor product of. You, you need not have to bother much about it. It's, it's basically uh, says that uh, if we have a bipart bipartite system, so it again belongs to the Hilbert space. And because one component belongs to H1 and another one belongs to H2. So that's how overall it's basically lying in the uh, Hilbert space, right? Everything lies in the Hilbert space. So you need not have to worry much. Uh, I will actually give you some example. Uh, then it would be more clearer what I mean by bipartite system. Now, how to represent, uh, you know, such kind of composite system? What about the state vector? Remember, as yet I am not talking about mixed state, I am still talking about pure state. So, uh, 
uh, how to represent such kind of a composite system such kind of composite system if it is say pure so it can be represented by a state vector and the representation as will be like this and i will explain it it will look little bit complicated in the beginning but it will be clear to you if i give an example so say summation because there are two components one is over the summation i and then another is over the summation j say then there's complex coefficient i have say c i j for the one component let me write the basis state it's pi one i and it is the tensor product direct product and that would be phi to z okay here uh, where actually these are this ket phi 1 i this is is an is an orthonormal basis is an orthonormal basis in the hilbert space h1 on the other hand on the other hand actually the same thing i'm going to talk about the other state on the other hand this skate basis skate phi to z is an orthonormal basis orthonormal basis in the hilbert space h2 and also it may be clear to you that these coefficients must have to satisfy this particular condition you can consider it as a normalization condition uh, and i think we have discussed it and this is a, a necessity uh, okay and it's it should be clear now a state uh, let me write here a state k psi which belongs to the hilbert space h which is basically the direct product or the tensor product of the hilbert space h1 and h2 is written is written as a tensor product tensor product or direct product it's called tensor product or direct product of two vectors two vectors as uh, i can write it as psi is equal to ket psi 1 di with direct product ket psi 2 okay and if i can actually write it this kind of a state is called uh, is called a separable state is called a separable state separable state or tensor product state tensor product state significance of this treatment uh, or discussing whatever we are it will be clear to you uh, some of you may find it difficult or it may be some most of a lot of you may be already aware but please uh, uh, just wait and just listen to these things carefully as i will give an example the things should be more clear to clearer to you so this is whenever we can write a composite system as a direct product of two state whenever we have a state like this and i can composite state like this say k psi if i can write it as a uh, direct product or tensor product of two uh, k state okay then this kind of states are called tensor product state or direct product state or of course in other words they are separable state as you can see i can write two separately it as a uh, ten, uh, direct product of psi 1 and psi, ket psi 1 and ket psi 2 and it has a very simple interpretation a separable state has a simple interpretation say the first system the first system is in the state uh, ket psi 1 while the second system is in the ket psi 2 it is as simple as that okay again let us uh, discuss the whole thing using a composite qubit system 
but before that let me comment on the notation in the case of the qubit composite system in the case of qubit composite system the state vector i can write as say k psi is equal to summation i is equal to 0 to 1 you see because it's a two state system i am talking about i have two qubits and every qubit i am just uh, going to work on the basis state k0 and k1 that i'm going to consider as my orthonormal basis state so for the first system i goes from 0 to 1 and the, for the second system also because it is also again a qubit so it is also going from say 0 to 1 and i have this coefficient complex coefficient c i j for the first qubit i have this orthonormal basis phi 1 say i and it's a direct product or tensor product with the another qubit that is phi 2 j so this is the state vector representing this two qubit composite system i think it is easy to understand and again here these basis states phi 1 i it said for the first qubit it has uh, the basis states are k0 and k1 similarly uh, for the state uh, for these basis states phi 2 j the basis states are simply k0 and k1 okay uh, now uh, let me uh, elaborate more about it what about the tensor product this tensor product can also be written in fact the tensor product of the two qubit system phi 1 i uh, tensor product with phi 2 j that can also be written in a short notation rather than writing this big thing all the time i can just write it as say phi 1 i phi 2 j okay this is a shorthand notation so we can write the full state vector for the two qubit composite system as follows now i can write it as k psi is equal to c 0 0 k 0 k 0 right i think uh, it's now you can easily follow it uh, just if you take a pen and paper and the you do it the way i'm doing it you'll be able to understand so c 0 1 k 0 1 in fact uh, should i okay let me just elaborate it uh, this side also c00 and this k00 is basically nothing but the direct product of k0 k0 okay you see here this also just look at that i goes from 0 to 1 j goes from 0 to 1 that's why i have c00 then c01 and i have other terms like c10 k to 1 0 plus c uh, 1 1 and k to 1 k to 1 or if i write it also the long no notation also i can write this would be k 0 this is what i'm writing for this part direct product of k 0 k to 1 and uh, and so on okay uh, let me just write it completely so it is k to 1 i'm talking about this part here it would be direct product of k1 k0 and the last term would be c11 direct product of k1 and k1 right uh, also don't uh, fail to see this that this coefficient has to satisfy this particular equation if you add up all the coefficients mod square of their modular square of their uh, amplitudes so that would be has to be equal to one this condition has to be satisfied the formalism that we have discussed so far is applicable to the so-called pure quantum state as you are already aware of for example a spin hub system uh, it is being either in the up state or in the down state is a pure state even a complex superposition of the up state and down state is also a pure state however in most practical situation it is not possible to have complete knowledge of the system in other words the state in practice is not an eigenstate of the observable but mixer of 
various eigen state each state having some classical probability such kind of states are called mixed states and we cannot specify a state vector for a mixed state and quite clearly the state vector formalism is not going to work uh, if we want to describe a mixed state and we have to rely on a or we have to uh, you know of course we have to invent a different kind of a formalism and it is already done uh, particularly von neumann uh, contributed a lot uh, to develop this uh, formalism and this formalism is called the density matrix or density operator formalism let us consider an ensemble an ensemble of two two state system or two level system okay two state systems uh, say a and b say a and b all right uh, these two states uh, are represented by say two kits system a is represented by this gate psi uh, in the basis say uh, gate 0 and gate 1 that is a alpha gate 0 plus beta gate 1 because it's a two state system and the probability that uh, the system is here uh, that you can define the the system by this gate psi with classical probability say p with i will explain what i mean by this uh, just in a moment probability probability p on the other hand the system b is represented by this state vector state gate say phi is equal to say gamma gate 0 plus delta gate 1 with classical probability because either you are going to pick a or pick b for sure so its classical probability is going to be 1 minus p say this for simplicity purposes let us say and just for explanation of the concept that I'm going to discuss now, let us consider that these two systems are in a box and these systems A and B are there. Now the question is if we make a measurement uh, in the box, if we make a measurement in this box and ask these questions that what is the probability that you are going to get the system uh, this ensemble uh, system basically a and b in the gate state zero in the gate state zero gate zero or gate one what is the probability that you are going to find the system finally in this quantum state gate zero and gate one okay so basically this is a measurement problem and this is measurement uh, process is involved and it involves a certain some steps the steps are as follows so first of all what you are going to do you are going to pick up either system a or system b so let us say that means you are either going to pick up say gate psi or gate alpha okay sorry gate phi from the box pick this is the measurement steps i'm now going to talk about from the box with uh, probability say p probability of picking uh, the state gate psi is p and gate phi is 1 minus p right this is completely a classical measurement and in the next step uh, you are going to make a measurement on the picked up step so the next step would be make measurement make measurement on the picked up state picked up state that is gate psi or gate phi right 
so you may pick, pick up kit psi with probability p and the probability of picking up kit phi the classical probability is 1 minus p now say you have picked up say you you picked up say you picked up the state psi kit psi and you know the kit psi is it is a superposition of the basis state alpha k0 plus beta k1 now the question is what is the probability that the state collapse to the k0 uh, the probability the probability that the state psi after making the measurement k psi collapse collapses to the state k0 is obviously mod alpha square but then there is a classical probability is also involved because in the first place you have to pick up the uh, state psi right k psi you have to pick up and that's the probability is picking that up is p so the probability this is very important the probability that the state psi collapses to the st uh, basis state k0 is p mod alpha square on the other hand uh, if say you have picked up k phi instead of k psi if you and then make a measurement if say k phi is picked up picked up uh, and then the probability the probability that uh, this phi k phi collapses collapses to this basis state k0 is how much that would be again it's very simple now because the probability of picking up the k phi state is 1 minus p that is the classical probability then after you make the quantum measurement and getting uh, the state k0 is mod gamma square because recall that uh, already we have written that k phi is a superposition of k0 and k1 and the coefficients involved were gamma k0 and delta uh, k1 right so this is the probability so overall then what is the total probability the total probability the total probability that the uh, this ensemble state the ensemble of the system a and b the ensemble is in the basis state is in the basis state k0 is p mod alpha square that means when you have picked up the k psi and 1 minus p gamma mod gamma square if you have picked up the state phi and picking up the state k phi is uh, probably classical probability is 1 minus p so uh, this is if you want to make the measurement uh, this is basically the probability of getting the ensemble in the state k psi similarly the probability probability of getting as a measurement getting the ensemble it is an easy guess now ensemble in the state in the basis state in the basis state k1 is so now again you look at it uh, k1 the probability of picking up suppose you pick up k psi then the probability is p and uh, then if you make a measurement on psi quantum measurement the probability of getting the state uh, k1 would be mod beta square right on the other hand if you have picked up the k phi state then the probability classical probability of selecting that is 1 minus p and then quantum measurement is going to give you mod delta square if you want to uh, get the system or the state in the state k psi so this is what is right it's simple this is what we uh, talk about when we are dealing with a mixed state of this nature
This particular treatment just I have discussed inspires us to define what is called the density operator. The issue is, say we have a random collection of quantum states is occurring with some probabilities. The question is, is there an efficient way to describe this affair rather than listing all the thousand quantum states and their corresponding probabilities? The answer is yes. Let us define the quantity called density operator as follows density operator the symbol for density operator is rho because it's an operator we'll put a cap there and the definition is this sum over j p j k psi j bra size a it's an outer product as you can see it's an outer product so it's an operator and here this k size a is a state in the hilbert space it's a state in the hilbert space that means this state belongs to the hilbert space h and it appears size a appears with probability probability pz that's a classical probability as we have discussed in the last example and also it is assumed that this state size a is normalized so the scalar product inner product this is equal to one okay now this formalism is quite powerful as we can calculate any expectation value of system operator by knowing the density operator so this definition you should uh, must have to remember okay if we know the density operator then we will be able to know the expectation value of any system operator let me invoke the case of pure state to illustrate this particular point let us say we have a pure state represented by the by kids psi as usual so let us say we have a pure state say k psi and therefore the density operator for this pure state would be simply this outer product because the classical probability is definitely going to be 100 percent p is equal to one here in the definition of the density operator p is equal to only one state and it's a pure state so therefore in the box example that i have given earlier you are always going to pick up only k psi okay because uh, that is what is to be contained as a collection of uh, the box is going to contain a collection of k size only and in the example that i have given the box example where we had the system a and b i uh, discussed the system a is also in the state k psi and system b is also in the state k psi so therefore if we have to pick up uh, we are always going to pick up only k psi with 100% probability now anyway let us uh, now calculate the expectation value of an observable let us say calculate the expectation value of an observable observable say o cap this is the operator representation of the observable o cap in the in the pure state in the pure state in the pure state k psi okay so we know uh, traditionally how uh, operators you know expectation values are calculated but before i do that because uh, this is an arbitrary state pure state i can always write it as an uh, superposition of eigenstate this principle is anyway all of our now 
quite expert i suppose have become expert so this is what i have and if i take the bra of this kit corresponding expression would be this so this would be ci star bra phi i so phi i is the basis steps and traditionally if i say calculate the expectation value of the operator we know just we have to calculate this particular quantity okay now let me utilize uh, this uh, expansion here so first let me put the bra there this is summation i and from this gate i will have another summation say sum over say state j and for for the bra thing i will have say c i star uh, for the kit i have c j and then i am going to have here it would be phi i o cap phi j right now because i have psi is equal to k psi is equal to sum over c i phi i i want to find out express this coefficient c i complex coefficient c i in terms of these states to do that let me multiply both sides of this equation uh, by say uh, let me take the inner product with the orthonormal basis say phi j then this is what i have because phi is a basis state phi forms the basis state so therefore i will have this inner product here phi j phi i and they are orthonormal so therefore i have this would be ci and delta j i okay if j is equal to i delta j would be equal to one if j is not equal to i they will be orthogonal to each other that would be equal to zero and because of this the summation thing will become simply cj so therefore i have say cj i can express this coefficient i can express in terms of this arbitrary state psi and the orthonormal state say phi j like this all right and the corresponding cj star would be equal to uh, uh, bra i and ket phi j this is what i think this is easy to understand now i can utilize it uh, for uh, calculating the expectation value let me once again write the expectation value o would be operator would be the expression we have i j sum over i j c i star c j phi i operator o phi j okay and this i can then write it as summation i j c i star i can write it as uh, this expression i can write as you can see i can utilize it c i star would be uh, bra psi phi i here and uh, c j would be that would be phi j psi and then we have this expression here let me just write it phi i o phi j okay this let me uh, simplify it further i have these are by the way just uh, scalar product or inner product these are number so this number i can write this side and this number i can write this side okay this if i do uh, then i will have phi j psi psi phi i and this guy is basically the matrix element i can write it as o i j and uh, as you can see as per the definition for the pure state i think i have already done it or not okay let me yeah i have written that the for pure state psi the density operator would be this so uh, therefore i can write it as i j phi j and this is the density operator this part is the density operator then i have here phi i o i j let me write, expand it once again write the full thing here that is phi i o phi j right now you see 
because of the fact that because the orthonormality condition phi i this outer product phi uh, ket phi i bra phi i this is equal to 1 right or identity this is identity so therefore this is equal to 1 this i can therefore write sum over j and i have phi j this is rho and then this is operator o and then this is phi j what you see that this is nothing but the sum of all the elements in the diagonal matrix of this product of these two matrices two operators so sum of the diagonal elements in a matrix is called trace so therefore i can write it as a trace of the product of the two operators rho and o uh, observable okay so what boils down as the expectation value of the observable o is simply the trace or trace of the product of the density operator and the uh, observable operator basically the product of the it is the trace of the product of the matrix of matrix representation of the density operator and the matrix representation of the density operator okay then so it's now everything boils down to, um, very simply whenever we talk about uh, finding out the expectation value of an operator using density matrix formalism is just to uh, calculate the trace of the product of the density matrix corresponding to density operator and the matrix representing the observable so this we have actually discussed for pure state we have got it for pure state the question is is the same result applies for mixed state also now we'll see that as well we cannot specify a state gate or state vector for mixed state but certainly we can represent it by a density operator as follows rho cap is equal to sum over j pj the pj is the classical probability psi j direct product of this outer product of this this is the usual definition of density operator as you can see now let us calculate the expectation value of an observable o now for pure state if psi j is a pure state you know the expectation value of that operator would be simply this one but if it is a mixed state then it has every uh, state psi j appears with some probability pj then you just have to take the sum of all all of them and this is what the uh, how you calculate the expectation value of an operator in the uh, for a mixed state right uh, let us now uh, expand it further and let me simplify it so this i can now write as summation j pj now here i'm going to apply a trick uh, I can utilize the the so-called completeness condition. Let me explain it. First, let me write the expression psi j o cap. Here I put sandwich this orthonormal basis phi k phi k psi j. I can always do this because of the fact that this orthonormal basis it satisfy the this completeness condition that means this basis k phi k span the whole uh, hilbert space so this is identity therefore i can always put it there now from here i can i can let me take this summation now uh, this side summation k summation over j pj uh, you see this is just a number because it's a scalar product so i can write it uh, this side so if i do that i have here uh, i can write it phi k psi j and the other one just let me write it as psi j o phi k all right further i can uh, write it this way summation over k let me take this guy out because 
sum over the summation is taken over k and let me take this summation over j inside and i have here pj this is mathematically mathematical tricks and very easy to follow as you can see this is psi j i can write here okay and then i have this o cap phi k i hope you are able to follow it now this guy here in the bracket is nothing but the density operator as part of our definition so this expression therefore i can write that means the expectation value of this operator o in the mixed state i can now write it as sum over k phi k rho o cap phi k so what you see this is nothing but the trace of the product of the density operator and the observable operator and this i can simply write as trace of rho cap o cap okay and this result is identical with that of the one that we have discussed for the uh, pure state so in general this is true that expectation value of an operator or an observable is simply the trace of the product of the density operator and the observable operator now finally let me throw some light into the physical meaning of various elements of the density matrix now consider okay i'm going now going to discuss about physical meaning of uh, okay let me say matrix elements matrix elements of the density operator this is basically going to help you in understanding many of the concepts later on you can and i am going to consider the matrix element of the density operator say rho i j in the basis state say phi k so therefore i can write it as say phi i rho k phi j this is the matrix element rho i j uh, for simplicity purpose let me consider a pure state for pure state i can write rho as this right this is the density operator for pure state phi j so for pure state rho is equal to this is the outer product right now again uh, what we can write uh, psi we can write it as a superposition of the basis states like this this i have already explained and from here just sometime back we got that ci i can write it as phi i psi and ci star i can write it as psi phi i utilizing this uh, here in this two i can simply write the first one would be simply ci and the other one would be cj star okay now coming to the diagonal elements first diagonal element for diagonal element i is going to be equal to j right so that means rho i i would be equal to c i c i star that is nothing but c i mod square and you can recognize that this guy is nothing but probability this basically gives the probability of finding probability of finding a state in the eigen state in the eigen state phi i all right and what about the off diagonal off diagonal elements refers to the fact that i is not equal to j so this would be rho i j is equal to c i c j star now because c i and c j are complex i can write c i as c i mod c i e to the power the phase would be say e to the power i theta i i can write c j star would be mod c j e to the power minus i theta j that's the phase part i can always write any complex quantity as amplitude and then exponential of the phase right so this is going to give me ci mod ci mod cj e to the power i 
theta i minus theta z. Okay. Now what it basically means that it means that the orthogonal elements depend on the relative phase difference between the uh, depend on the relative phases between the states phi k uh, phi i and k phi z. Okay. Let me better write it. The orthogonal as it is evident from this expression, orthogonal elements uh depend on the relative relative phases phases between i hope you can write my read my handwriting okay it is between between the states get phi i and phi z right and this is going to result in resulting in interference terms interference terms i think i will uh, throw more light into it when we'll do some example later on in this course let me stop for now in the part 2 of this lecture we'll continue our discussion on density matrix in particular its various properties and also we'll see how to distinguish between pure and mixed states so let us meet in the next lecture thank you so much